How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to BTC Brown, Biblical Truth Central. It's Brother D here back with another video. You know something? When I started this YouTube channel many, 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 many years ago, I originally began it because I couldn't comment on videos without having some sort of an account. YouTube won't let you comment without making an account. So that's what I did. Didn't dream of putting myself on camera. Didn't dream of talking about any, much of anything. I remember the first couple of times I ever tried to make a video. It was very awkward. It was hard. I was stumbling over my words. And I'm just saying, you know what? Forget this. I can't do this. This isn't for me. So I left it alone for many, many years. And then I came back to YouTube. Introducing the fitness side of my life. And then... I burnt myself out on that, putting that before things that are above, and then I came back one more time last year, 100% dedicating this channel to Jesus Christ. I didn't know how it was going to work out. I didn't know what direction it was going to go. I didn't know. I just had no idea what was going to happen when I started talking about the Lord on this channel. I had no idea. I came out with an intro video of me standing in a field and I just started saying things, observations of the way that the world is going and I felt like somebody needed to stand up and to say something. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be the first. There have been many that have come before me preaching, teaching, sharing their faith, professing Christ Jesus as their Savior. Many, many have come before me, but I knew that I could no longer just stand on the fence and do nothing. I could no, no longer call myself a Christian and do nothing. I could no longer call myself a follower of the Lord and do nothing. So I picked up my phone and I went in that field and I started just saying whatever the Holy Spirit put on my, my heart. And it took off from a wildfire from that point. You see, I, I didn't come here to get attention. I didn't come here for any type of fame or nothing like that. No YouTube fame. This is a Christian channel, folks. That, it don't work like that in, in, in the world, especially when you talk about the Bible and sin and repentance and Jesus Christ. When you talk about these things, not a very popular thing to do. Not going to win you a lot of friends, but... It may most definitely win you some souls, amen. I don't consider myself to be no prophet or anything of that nature. I don't want that office. But what I am is a God-fearing man who loves Jesus Christ. I'm a God-fearing man who wants to do what he possibly can for the Lord. I'm a God-fearing man who wants to see other people come to Jesus Christ. It's not enough for me to wish. It's not enough for me to pray. But I had to open my mouth. And I had to pray for boldness to be able to open my mouth and withstand whatever comes my way. I've been called stupid, dumb, foolishness, incompetent, all kind of stuff for the name of Jesus Christ. And guess what? That's exactly what he said would happen. Blessed is he who persecutes you for the name of the Lord's sake. They will say all different type of things about you that are untrue and false. But fear not and rejoice. Because you're being persecuted for the name of Jesus Christ. I want nothing more than to see people saved. The Bible says that we will be held accountable for all of the actions in which we partake in, in the flesh. So everything I do, everything you do, everything we do, we're going to have to answer for one day. So that means if I sit on the fence and do nothing and my time comes and the Lord says, you have been saved for many decades and you didn't witness to one person. You didn't share your faith with one person. All you did was go to church. 
All you did was read your Bibles. And that is what a lot of Christians think that, that, that they think that's all you have to do to follow the Lord. The disciples didn't sit around reading scrolls all day long, talking amongst each other. They traveled. They went from house to house. They went to different towns on foot, preaching in dangerous places that they would consider ghettos back then. They didn't stay preaching to the choir. The choir knows the gospel. Sister Betty knows the gospel. Brother Morris, Brother Morris knows the gospel. Everyone in the church knows the gospel, but it's the people out in these streets that don't know the gospel. They may have heard of Jesus, but they don't know who he is and what he's done. And the job of a believer is to relay that message over to everybody. Well, we are judged and you haven't done anything for the Lord. Do you think he's not going to call you out? We will be judged for everything we do. This doesn't mean you got to stand on the corner with signs and a bullhorn. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that to profess your faith. You don't have to do that to share Jesus Christ. But there's a lot of things you could do that a lot of Christians don't do. Out of fear that they're going to be judged. Fear that people are going to look at them like they're crazy and weird. Do you not think that's how people looked at Christ? The Pharisees said this man is a drunkard. They said this man has demons. They say that this man gets his power from devils. We're talking about the son of God being called out and lied on by reckless religious men. And it's Christians that scared to take some persecution? What people think of you is irrelevant. It's the message that matters. There's simply just is not, there, there's not enough of us out here. Not enough. Not enough. If every self-professing Christian were to get up on YouTube right now, and, and even attempt to do what I what I try to do as much as I can, the world would be a, a, a whole different place, whole different place. But a lot of people, they, they, they're in the church every single Sunday, sitting in their homes, reading their Bibles, and as you should, as you should, read your Bibles, absolutely. Study to show thyself approved is what the Bible says. The book of Peter tells us to be ready to give an answer to everybody who may ask you something regarding your faith. You don't want to be caught without any knowledge. What's more embarrassing to have somebody ask you, ask you a question about what it is you believe and you can't answer it. But if you're studying the scriptures, you don't have to worry about things like that happening to you. Amen. But there had to come a time where you do some work, some real work. Every one of us is called to evangelize. Every last one of us is called to share our faith with the entire world, regardless of what they think. The world doesn't have a problem sharing their philosophies, right? The world doesn't have a problem telling you what they believe and what they don't care for and what they care for. The world has no problem with pushing their own personal agenda and pushing their own personal interpretation of how things should be. But there's Christians out here that are quiet. Oh, I don't, I don't want such and such to find out I'm sold off for Jesus. Oh, I don't, I don't want people to look at me like I'm some religious person or that I'm crazy. If you feel that way about your faith, maybe you don't love Christ. Jesus said, whosoever shall profess me in front of men, I shall profess before my father, 
For whosoever shall deny me in front of men, believe it. I'll deny in front of my father as well. So we better think twice before we even think about being ashamed of Christ. You know those people out here? They won't, they won't even wear a t-shirt that says, I love Jesus only, without thinking they're going to get looks and stuff. Let me tell you something. You know that every time I've ever worn apparel that had the name of Jesus on it in some sort of quote, people loved it. People loved it. You know what that told me? That told me that society is a lot more open than people think. That when you see something like that, it just brightens your day. How could you feel bad when you see the name of Jesus Christ somewhere? You see the name of Jesus on a billboard, you feel good. You see Jesus on somebody's head, you feel good. You see Jesus on the bumper sticker, you feel good. On a license plate, you feel good. On somebody's hood or your shirt, you feel good. You know why? Because there's life. Everlasting life in the Son of Man. We got a lot of work to do. I want to challenge you. If you're somebody who's, who, who's been on the fence about what they believe or how they should go about their faith, pray that God gives you a heart of boldness and urgency to spread the gospel and his message like a wildfire. A lot of you out there can be used but you have to make yourself available. God wants to use everybody. No one is exempt. No one should be on the fence. God wants to use all of his children. It's just like parents have children. They want to see their kids flourish. They want to see, I'll use my kids for example. I want to see all of my kids flourish. I want to see them do the best they can in this life. I want to see them stand out. I don't want them on the fence. I don't want them with a basement mentality. I want them out. I want people to know who they are and who taught them. Jesus wants the same thing for us. He wants the world to know the gospel and the hope that comes with it. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for watching. If you're new, please consider subscribing. More material to come. Peace.